this week I am really focused on trying to find a second hand, preferably antique sideboard to go in our dining room. I really want to make over the dining room and I feel like that piece of furniture is just, it's just what I need to make that space and kind of pull it all together. I've been kind of exploring some of the antique stores around Lansing and this weekend I started my quest by going to a couple of places around this area and I'm just going to kind of throw it back to Saturday and Sunday and let voiceover Casey tell you all about it. On Saturday, I enlisted my husband and mother-in-law for a trip to the Antiques Market of Williamston, which is just east of Lansing. This store was pretty large and each booth was loaded with all sorts of vintage and antique items ranging from furniture to small collectibles to memorabilia, and there were a lot of dolls. Did anyone else's mom low-key force a porcelain doll collection on them as a child? Just me? I was really on the hunt for that perfect mid-century modern buffet or dresser to go in our dining room. Most of the furniture here was more traditional, but still quite nice and in great condition. While I had something very specific in mind that I was looking for, I did see several pieces that I liked and I could see potential for in future projects. The price points were also fairly reasonable, I thought. Definitely not as low as a thrift store, but great value for the quality of most of the pieces, especially when compared to buying new pieces of the same quality and style, if you can even find the same styles new. Now, I wasn't really looking for smaller items, but I was so inspired by all of the dishware and art and books and tchotchkes that were packed into nearly every booth. I'll definitely be back for items like this when I need them for a future project. And of course, there were loads of vintage clothing in some of the booths, although I did not see a single vintage sewing pattern, but maybe I overlooked them. I did stumble into a couple of booths that had more of that 40s, 50s, and 60s mid-century modern style. This booth had some really cool items in a collection of dishware that I was kind of drooling over. They were marked as Ziesel Red Wing. Loved, loved these, but I decided it wasn't the right time to grab them up. This booth was a bit smaller, but really close to the style I was looking for. This vendor had just curated everything so nicely. I loved these little cookbook collections. So cute. I really love this. Only $85, that's not too bad. I keep seeing several little things that I like, like little decor items, but I wanna wait until I get the furniture that I want, because I actually don't have a surface to put them on yet. I'm seeing so many, so many cute things. On Sunday, I headed over to the Mega Mall Antique Store in Lansing. This store was huge and had a similar setup to the Williamston store with independently curated booths. Although it wasn't quite as organized and felt a little more chaotic, I, I got a little overwhelmed in the store, I'll be totally honest. Some areas were stuffed to the absolute max with uh, stuff, you know, everywhere. And it was even hard to walk in some spaces. They didn't have as much furniture as I was hoping for, but again, a great place to dig around for decor items if you have the energy for it. Just down the street from the Mega Mall was the Unique Boutique. This was a much smaller antique store with a warmer and cuter feel to it. I just didn't find what I was looking for, so I moved along, but I may be back another day. All right, so anyway, today I am back on the hunt. I found a couple of other antique stores that are open today that I would like to go to. One is called the Little Red Schoolhouse. It's west of here, west of Lansing. And it looks like it's a, you know, kind of similar setup, antique mall situation. But I am excited to go over there and kind of poke around a little bit. And then there's also a place in, I think, Mason, Michigan, that I want to go to today as well. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough when I go there. And hopefully I'll get lucky and find something perfect. If not, it's possible that I could end up buying something online or buying something at another store. The only problem is that a lot of the stuff that I'm finding online is either too expensive. Like if it's solid wood, I really want something solid wood. It's either too expensive for my budget or it's like really cheaply made if it is in my budget. So um, a lot of the stuff that's, you know, in the three to six hundred dollar range is usually made out of particle board or MDF or laminate. I really would prefer something that's a little bit more well-made. Um, 
I just don't want to pay for it, <laughs> which I guess is kind of a problem here. So anyway, I'm going to continue searching around town, seeing what I can find, and uh, hopefully I'll find some good stuff. So wish me luck. Let's go. The Little Red Schoolhouse was a mix of vintage and antique pieces, as well as new items with that vintage or antique flair. This store had a lot of nice things, and while it was also packed with stuff, it was a very enjoyable browsing experience. I found several pieces of art here that I liked and also some Fiesta Ware dishes that I loved. I have a thing for dishes and pops of color, apparently. My next stop was Timeless Treasures in Mason, Michigan. When I first walked in, I was a little underwhelmed with the first aisle, but as I moved through the store, I saw a lot of really great pieces. The store was clean and well organized and had a few mid-century modern pieces, although no buffets that fit my needs, unfortunately. This was my favorite booth in the store. Maybe it was the furniture, maybe it was the lighting, but it was a vibe. I kind of loved this enormous world map, but I couldn't find a price tag. I thought it could work as art in our dining area since our ceilings are so tall. I'm still kind of thinking about it. I might, I may have to go back for it. And at all of the thrift stores, I noticed that mirrors were abundant in a variety of styles and very reasonably priced. Mirrors can get really expensive, so I always look at these when I go to thrift stores and now antique stores. My last stop on this day was the Antiques District in Mason. This was definitely the antique shopping jackpot. So many nice antique and vintage items and several stores clustered together, which is super convenient. They also have flea markets on the weekends, which I plan to check out very soon. One of the shop owners gave me a flyer with all of the antique shops in the area, and if I wasn't getting a little tired and hangry, I might have gone to them all, but I decided to call it a day and plan to come back. On Wednesday, I wanted to check out one last store that I found in my Google search, Vintage Junkies in Lansing, in a little area downtown called REO Town. This shop was such a treat. The style was exactly what I had been looking for, even though I still didn't find that mid-century modern buffet, which I'm now learning is pretty hard to come by. I really enjoyed browsing here and was just in awe of the owner's design eye. I'll definitely be back. So I did not find the mid-century modern buffet sideboard of my dreams this week. Didn't find it last week. Didn't find it the week before. I've been looking for this thing for a really, really long time and have come up short, but I've been very encouraged because I've been trying to get a little resourceful, find some new places to look. I have found a lot of new to me places that I'm very excited to return to and continue exploring. Now in this dining room where I'm sitting right now, it's, it's more, we have kind of an open concept kitchen, dining room, living room space. And in this corner of our apartment, I really, there's a lot that I wanna do in this space. It's not even close to where I want it to be yet. In the past, this has been something that has really kind of held me up from taking any action on decorating the space or even other spaces in our home because I've always thought, okay, I have this very clear idea of what I wanna do in the space, but I wanna do it all at once. But I also don't have the budget to do it all at once the way that I really wanna do it. So I've decided that I need to just kind of keep taking small steps, small little actions toward that bigger goal of creating a space that I really love because otherwise I'm just not gonna create the space. So one of the things that I did this week was go to Home Depot and get a few new plants. So before this week, I only had two house plants, one of which, this little fiddly fig over here, I don't even know if you can see it in the frame, but that little plant was really 
really limping along for a little while. And I just started watering it more regularly and miraculously, you know, it started kind of bouncing back. And the plant that's in my sewing room, I've been watering it regularly. It is also flourishing. So I decided it was okay for me to get a few new plants to keep those plants company. And I love them. I got, let's see, one, two, three, four, four new house plants. Um, they're all easy care, or at least they were listed as easy care indoor plants that need, you know, bright indirect light, which we have a lot of in this space. And bringing these in has already made this little area feel so much more warm and welcoming. I also picked up a little uh, tray, a little wooden tray that's painted on the edges. It has this little fluting around the edges at Home Goods. And I love this. It's a great way to kind of corral some of the things that can kind of accumulate on our dining table. So like mail, and we have like a little remote control for the fan up here and little odds and ends that might collect on the table here. So I bought that, I thought that looked kind of nice. And then I just got a couple of candles cause I love candles. And going to all of these antique stores this week really, it was just really encouraging cause I saw a lot of stuff that was actually pretty reasonably priced. I don't know why in my mind I thought, oh, antique stores are gonna be way overpriced. No, they really weren't. And in general, I was finding a lot of really high quality items at these antique stores and the prices were, I felt like very reasonable. So the search continues. I'm gonna keep looking for pieces of furniture to go in the space. I even considered making like a little sideboard to go back here. I think I could definitely do it. I'm not intimidated by woodworking projects and you know building things and making things at all. The only thing is we do live in an apartment and I don't really wanna use power tools here. My biggest concern is getting sawdust everywhere and or disturbing our neighbors, which I don't wanna do. So that's not totally off the table yet. It definitely is something that I'm, I'm pondering and have been thinking about ways that I could make that happen. But as of right now, it is definitely something that feels like kind of a pain in the butt. I don't really wanna deal with it right now because we just don't have a great space to do that kind of thing. I also love these plants next to the seat cushions of the chairs that I recovered last week. So last week I shared how I just recovered the seat cushions of the chairs that I thrifted ages ago. I've had these chairs for months now and I finally recovered the cushions. I found this kind of olivey dark green velvet fabric at Joanne Fabrics and it just looked so nice and it was a bargain fabric. So I got it for a really, really good price and I bought extra of it so that I could make something else out of it if I want to later. So this week's video is a little bit shorter than most of my videos. I've been kind of experimenting with, you know, new content ideas and new topics. So if you're new here, I typically share a lot of sewing content. It's mostly sewing related stuff and I have been wanting to share more projects, you know, other creative projects that I'm interested in working on. I've been wanting to share those here on the channel as well. So this is the first time that I've done a video here that didn't have anything sewing related, I don't think. Although I did, I did make my shirt. So <laughs> this is a me made shirt that I have had for a few years now. This is actually a pattern that I sell and I'll, I'll link it down in the description below if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, but anyhow, I want to thank you guys so much for being here and watching this. Let me know what you thought. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. And um, yeah, thank you guys for being here. I think that's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.